emergency. There's been another outbreak of the vocal cord parasites on the base. Several men are dead. It started in the laboratory on the quarantine platform where the radiation leak occurred. I'd only just deployed the security team. I've sent in a rescue team to help, but they haven't returned. Boss, I need you on this. Come back to Mother Base ASAP. Give the order and I'll, I'll go alone. Boss, what are you... There's no need for that. We can't afford to lose anyone else. We have no idea what's going on exactly. in Exactly. There... Anyone still alive's at their breaking point. Last thing we need is another unit storming in. No telling how they'd react. Fine. First off, check how much the infection has spread. Rescue comes next, after we know the situation. When you're ready to move, just use the iDroid. situation again. We've got another parasite outbreak in the laboratory on the quarantine platform. What is this? No idea. Hang on to 
on, Snake. We've just had a transmission from inside. Here's the audio. Where's it coming from? Unknown. It cut off before we could get a fix. It all makes sense. Think he means the parasite? No way to know. But right now, that's all we've got. Hopefully he can tell us something. We'll have to close the tent behind you, boss. Don't think the infection's airborne, but... Find a source of that transmission, boss. Find our man. You never know. What is it? Something sweet. I can smell it even through the mask. The rescue team reported that too. Said it smelled like ripe fruit. We cannot allow the infection to spread. If anyone shows symptoms, you must put them out of their misery. That includes me. Why? <laughs> 
He's wearing a mask. He's part of the rescue team. Looks like he's not the one who sent the message. I'd like to hear what he has to say, but you need to keep going. What the hell happened? Oh. At least you're okay. What's going on? I, I win. I'm no snail. Damn it. Send the transmission. Seems like he had a way of IDing who's symptomatic. But what was he trying to say? Snail. Yes, of course. It all makes sense now. Do not let anyone showing symptoms get outside. As infection progresses, it triggers an overwhelming urge to get out in the open. That's the parasite controlling them. Once outside, the birds will feed on infected bodies, spreading the parasite on land.
We can't let them outside! Damn it! We can't allow any contagious individuals to leave! Shoot, Snake! <laughs>
suicide. It's too dangerous.
There's nothing we could have done for them. We're all grateful, boss. It's your fault! They're dead because of you! What? He's right. I killed them with my own hands. They were on your side! I'm on your side! And you turned them all to ashes! They wanted you to shoot. It was that or be burned alive. Come on. Let's get this over with. Wait. Scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. I will always be with you. Plant your roots in me. Bearing them at sea. What then? We'll make diamonds from their ashes. Take them into battle with us. A shining light to our brothers in arms, even in death. Boss, I don't know how you do it. I... All I could do was obsess over revenge, doubting my comrades along the way. But even after all we've accomplished, the phantom pain never let up. If anything, it just got worse. But you understood that from the start, didn't you? From the moment you opened your eyes in that hospital, you knew it wouldn't go away. That you've been fighting the pain and confronting your phantoms the whole time. Knowing full well the battle would never end, not till the day you die. I respect that now, more than ever. It's an honor and a privilege, Big Boss. Well, Doctor. 
I have the report on the incident at the quarantine facility. Assuming the vocal cord parasite evolved, I'm sorry, underwent a mutation. The only plausible explanations are exposure to some high concentration mutagen or radiation. As you know, some of the staff at the quarantine facility were infected with the parasites. The Wolbachia prevented them from copulating, but the parasites themselves can't be removed from their host's vocal cords. Once you're infected with Skullface's parting gift, you're stuck with it. The researchers regularly used X-ray equipment to monitor the parasites in their throats. No problem there, they kept a close eye on the radiation doses. But that equipment didn't just give off X-rays. It was also emitting beta rays. Even though that's unnecessary for the scans. See, beta rays have far worse effects on DNA than X-rays. Meaning the only logical conclusion is that someone added in a beta ray emitter to trigger a mutation. Those beta rays leaked out from inside the equipment. Because the emitter was retrofitted, the shielding was inadequate. And the person who ordered and inspected the equipment was you, Doctor. That makes you the only person with the opportunity to install that emitter. So now you're saying I sabotage medical equipment for some wild plan to make the vocal cord parasite kill everyone? Or maybe you thought it'd reveal a way to treat the parasite without using the Wolbachia. With that much to barter, I suppose some people would welcome even a pathetic cur like you. Just stop it! You'd have no shortage of buyers, but most would be happy with just the parasite. You wouldn't need to offer anything else. However, if that buyer already knew about the parasite, they'd also know that by itself, it's no longer the ultimate bargaining chip it once was. To sell to that buyer, you need to throw in a bonus. A way to one-up it. There's only one buyer who'd be after that. <laughs> Emmerich, we record all communications on Mother Base. That includes radio transmissions to and from homemade devices. You've been in frequent contact with people in America. A private biotech company. A client of which is DARPA. And they are connected to Cypher. You made a deal with Cypher. You offered them a new parasite in exchange for your safety. This is the only place in the world where the vocal cord parasite still exists. And you used it as a testing ground. Tried to resurrect their bioweapon. But your plan to obtain the parasite has failed. Your bullshit ends now. And don't think you're leaving here alive. Enough to attract 
even a species with such a weak nose. So, before the parasites take complete control, I must. Most of the staff in here are already infected. At least, everyone I've looked at is. Infection with this parasite causes a high fever in the pharynx. I have modified a pair of night vision goggles to react only to this temperature range. With these goggles, you can identify who is infected. Other infected will, like me, feel compelled to make it outside. If the ravens get their meal, they'll head for land next. That cannot be allowed to happen. The whole idea of the vocal cord parasites was that they'd only copulate once exposed to a specific language over time. But the parasites infecting our men in the laboratory laid their eggs straight away. The larvae were eating their lung tissue almost immediately. What kind of mutation was it? Those who were infected and cured still carried the vocal cord parasites in their throats. They were still there, but the males had been rendered female by the Bulbachia, and copulation could not occur. So we thought, but it is the Bulbachia that mutated. Not the parasites? You remember I told you the Volbachia attempts to maximize its number of female infected hosts? Yes, hence the male-to-female transformation. Precisely. But other Volbachia strains use different methods. Cytoplasmic incompatibility, killing the males, and parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis? Aphids? Aphids use that to reproduce via females only. Very good. The females lay their eggs without a male present, creating clones of themselves in explosive numbers. Parthenogenesis was originally a means for an organism to take maximum advantage of abundant resources by increasing its numbers. Certain strains of Obachia forced this to occur, to create more and more infected females. And that's why our men develop symptoms in the blink of an eye. Wolbachia, causing parthenogenesis, is common in parasitic wasps. Of course, the Wolbachia I introduced your men did not have this characteristic. But I believe the mutation, whatever it was, caused it to force parthenogenesis in its host, the vocal cord parasites. The Wolbachia we used to prevent egg lane became the agent of limitless reproduction. There's something else. The symptomatic infected in the laboratory all wanted to get outside, even knowing there was napalm waiting for them out there. You said the parasites made them act that way, but parasites controlling humans. Is it possible? Parasites altering the host's behavior is a common occurrence in the world of nature. Long ago, the vocal cord parasites had this ability, but even I never foresaw they might control humans. Until I heard the things your man said. You mean the researcher on the top floor? The bit about, I'm not a snail? Yes. Among parasitic worms, there is a genus called Leucochloridium that uses snails as intermediary hosts. As you know, snails prefer dark, gloomy environments. But once parasitized by leucochloridium, they desire to be in the light. And that is not all. The parasitic worms thrust themselves into the snail's antennae, making them swell to abnormal size. The snail Meanwhile, frantically wiggles his antennae as the parasites squirm inside. The swollen, wriggling antennae soon resemble caterpillars. I don't get it. 
It is so they can be eaten by birds. Leucochloridium needs a bird as its definitive host. To breed, they require their snail host to be snapped up by a predator. So they make the humble snail appear to be a delicious caterpillar and lead it to somewhere in open sight. So you mean the staff trying to get outside? Was so the birds could peck at them. The parasites altered their mental state, making them crave higher places and to be outdoors. I can only surmise that both the Volbachia and the parasites mutated before the ancestors of the vocal cord parasites infected humans. Their hosts were birds. What we saw in the laboratory was some throwback to that time. The parasites attempting to make birds their intermediary hosts. It sounds insane. A prey mantis that is host to a parasitic hair worm will dive into water and drown itself. Just so the hair worm can lay its eggs in water. Rats infected with Toxoplasma gondii lose their instinctive caution and run right up to cats. Just some of the many ways parasites control the host. But we're humans. Surely our minds are too complex for that. I thought just the same. Free will is what makes us human. So it never occurred to me that the parasites could be controlling the symptomatic. But the mood... The will of a person can be easily affected by the balance of their cerebral substances. Take the toxoplasma I mentioned. It does infect humans, and it is thought the infected develop a more reckless attitude. Hmm. But to think that mutations occurred in both the Walbachia and its parasite hosts... Your observation is most apt. Both mutations occurring at once indicates the presence of a powerful mutagen. I see. Keep working on narrowing down what it was. 